hey guys so we were we have discussed till here what azure manages for you and what customer as as a customer what you gonna manage okay so each of this you know it is runs on container images or you can deploy the applications via the hand chart and we will know about what a hand chart or how to push a binary from your local how you're gonna do that or, or the docker images from the docker hub or you can have your own private registry like Azure Container Registry. Uh, your firm can have your own private enterprise uh, enterprise uh, uh, container registry where you can have uh, images and then you can uh, pull directly into the Azure, uh, into the Azure Kubernetes Service Cluster. So for that, yes, uh, Azure explain, explicitly provides you, uh, you know, the connection which you can set up directly with the ACR and you can consume the images into your cluster to spin up any of the VMs. And uh, if you go a little little bit more deeper uh, understanding of uh, the Azure Kubernetes service. So take an example like you have your uh, cluster running okay, and you mentioned replica set. Okay, so what exactly is the replica set is so the replica set says like you know uh, how many copy of your particular uh, pods or the your particular service instance or your particular applications you want to uh, run on the AKS cluster. So so that you define with the use of YAML files and uh, I would show like few of the YAML files which I have and I push. To the Azure Guy GitHub repository, which you can readily consume in your local, and then you know you can uh, bring up your service at runtime. Uh, so the replica set. So when we discussed like we have Azure Kubernetes services which spins up nodes. So when it spins up nodes, it 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 manages about you know uh, how many nodes you can put up uh, inside the particular VMSs or how much how many you want to scale up in the VMSs configuration and then each nodes will have pods as discussed earlier so the pods will have your container so each of the pods actually um, you know occupies a private the private ip from the cluster okay so when you provision a cluster so with the nodes so the node at present uh, azure occupies 30 uh, ip addresses okay so if you tagging with your own on-premise vnet so it would require a subnet or it creates a subnet of 30 ips at least because um, logically if you speak what uh, azure says uh, uh, as of now the hard uh, lock which had been set uh, like the each of uh, cluster node can span uh, uh, up to 30 pods okay so that's how you know 30 private ips can or can be consumed only you can more than you can go beyond that because again the, the, again out of the 30 you have some common ip addresses which are shared uh, by your the default addresses which you cannot use so almost 25 to 27 ip addresses you can use as part of that particular subnet so approximately you can deploy 27 pods in a node so that's an hard limit as of now you have but it can be dealt with use of kubernet uh, concept instead of azure cni azure uh, uh, azure cni so it's network interface sort of concept which sets an hard limit of 30 ips you can use only 30 ips for uh, a node per node basis so if you want more uh, like ips or you want to occupy more subnet you need to spin up one more node okay and but for you know as a as for getting a good performance and average response the average uh, if you're running a 27 applications think if you want a decent uh, performance you can go with uh, the azure cni and have 30 ips and each particular pod will have ip addresses and each particular applications inside the particular pod would be recognized by the port number so this is uh, this is the port the container port while configuring you can always you know uh, mention the service port on which you you want to run okay the content port so the traffic which comes to the particular container port would re would redirect to your particular service port so this is one example where you have a service a and this service you want to deploy onto the pods okay so if you take uh, uh, like any of the services if you deploy into the pods inside the cluster so you can actually access from another pod or from the another namespaces by just referring to the service name 
a dot backend so which says about the cluster dns or this is basically the namespace name so the namespace is uh, as i said the namespace is a logical grouping and you can create namespaces to separate applications so this namespace can be something like application one namespace or customer one namespace or customer two namespace so it would be like the service name like xyz application dot the service uh, customer two uh, namespace dot svc dot cluster dot local so you can actually test uh, the access between the namespaces or if you want if you have customers so who want to interact uh, you know uh, share the um, share two different or make a cross communication cross namespace communication uh, within a cluster so they can do by uh, you know like enabling the cross namespace because by default it is not enabled uh, you can uh, enable it and you can uh, do a curl from one particular namespaces uh, inside your cloud shell if you are uh, using the using cloud shell and then you can curl this particular url where it will try to interact or sort of it, it would be sort of a ping call which it will make to the service in another sitting in another namespace or uh, basically in another pod so what happens uh, inside the aks cluster so when you spin up a node and nodes uh, the pods would be allocated uh, randomly or it depends upon the the grouping how you are setting up uh, so so if you mention like you know you want a, rep a replica set like you have two nodes but you want a replica of uh, four four pods you want to run then it will distribute then it will distribute your particular pods across the uh, across the two nodes which you have like if you set the replica set to four pods then it would run two two pods in each of the nodes so that it equally distributes in case you set a replica set to um, you know just one then it would just choose either of the node and it would just you know uh, provision your pod into that okay so remember the nodes are uh, uh, the nodes can be you know it's managed by you okay so what you can do is you know it depends upon you the node size you know whether you want to go with the ds ds series or whatever series it would depend upon you and it also depend uh, upon you know what sort of compute application you are trying to run inside your particular service so if it is more of artificial intelligence or more of calculations it is doing then you can you know decide your size accordingly and then uh, spin up your pod and it would do your stuff uh, so the basic Kubernetes dashboard would would like uh, this. This is the default dashboard, and uh, the, like where you have namespaces, pod, and nodes, and uh, persistent volumes. So basically, if you are persisting uh, data in the in the in the in the, in the form of disks or Azure files, so that that that's what it creates persistent volumes or so called as persistent volume claim uh, on the Azure files or the disks and then it would store on your local hard disks of your particular nodes okay and you can see those nodes uh, those particular disks uh, by going to the by going to the mc underscore resource group so we will come to know we will uh, we'll discuss and we'll see more about it and you can see the storage classes and more of and whatever namespaces you select it would uh, you know filter out those particular resources in your kubernetes dashboard and it would show to you yeah, we will go more about it, the more, you know, the in upcoming videos. And these are the topics which we are also, you know, uh, will be discussing. And uh, you can see this is how exactly a multi-tenant cluster going to look. And uh, this is one particular you know, feature where uh, something called as Monaco. So the Monaco is sort of an uh, open source add-on which you can have, uh, you know, enabled on your particular on Azure Cloud Cell, so that you can. It would be easy to uh, maintain your uh, maintain your files which you upload onto Cloud Shell to execute as you're executing your files from the local PowerShell window. Okay, so you upload your files in here and you can edit on the fly, and then you can just provision your services uh, onto AKS or any of the Azure services and uh, as as i said we will also go through many of the monitoring solutions so this is the monitoring solutions which uh, i have integrated already and we'll be talking about and these are sort of the beautiful dashboards which you can see
which we will be uh, which we, we which we will be you know enabling uh, which would get more data which i sure is not able to uh, give over the issue monitor or the log entity dashboard right now so it would give the namespaces uh, level data so you can see controller pods counts you can see how much uh, you know which particular service is using how much utilization it is doing if the node disks are use space is more than greater than 80 percent you have and you and the, the dashboards are uh, like open source and there are many dashboards you just use it uh, with a tag and then you know uh, once you have metrics it will uh, put your all the content in this particular format and it would show you very valuable outputs so yes these are the exciting things which you're gonna do but be patient and then we're gonna do great stuff for you and um, with this uh, uh, let's go to our issue portal uh, and this is uh, the issue portal uh, so like you can get a subscriptions easily but like one i've got is uh, is a pay as you go account and um, so for this uh, at, at first we would be you know uh, like we can create a new resource group which I always do so we will call it as AKS uh, RG001 so this is uh, you know the basic uh, uh, like uh, then like we will be following the you know best practices naming standards also here so what you can say is like um, I'll first give my alias because if you're working in enterprise then that like you know you, you would be working across a lot of teams and you do not want to uh, mess up your uh, like resources with other resources uh, your resource groups overlaps with other resource groups or you know they get confusion so what I do is um, I give the alias name I give the service uh, service name so whether it's pass uh, IAS or something like that so if if it is then I can go like you know I can make it as pass service it is being a pass service and uh, what is a service and this is a resource group and uh, the count of the resource group so this is how I would like to provision my resource group and um, so once I have the resource group I go with the cluster naming so for our POC purpose I'll not go with the standard because a lot of time we go, we need to enter the cluster name for our POCs so what I will do uh, let's discuss about the naming standards as well for the cluster what we can do is like we can go with this uh, ideas and the same uh, pass and you can go with AKS and you can uh, say cluster and you can say 001 so this sort of naming standards you can follow as a rough name standard but for us we will go it as AKS and it's not an RBAC cluster so it would be an AKS cluster okay so that be simple and it depends upon which area you want to spend like i'll just pin in southern part of india uh, let's see whether they will yes the image is available for services available for southern part of india and it's always uh, you know best to take the stable version rather than trying you know, taking any preview versions uh, until unless you specifically need a specific service so here you can see it says dns name prefix okay so so this um, the when you mentioned so obviously you know it's a compulsion uh, so initially it would uh, have this particular dns prefix to uh, refers refer to your if it would set uh, an fqdn for your kubernetes api server uh, and then and then if you go with the node size so the nodes are nothing but the vms right so it says a vm size so so the vm size would be choosing up uh, as low as possible i uh, would uh, go with uh, uh, the smaller ones and uh, premium desk supported but um, not supported let's take okay let's go with premiums because we'll have persistent volume claim and graphana and other monitoring which would you know have a lot of read rights. so let's go with uh, them and uh, i would try to choose the one with lower price uh, let's pick up this it has one cpu ram is 3.5 and iops is this and four data disks uh, uh, that's a uh, maximum limitations it has uh, yes and uh, even we can pick up b2s let's go with b2s it's because the data disks are same the ram is less which doesn't matter for our poc uh, let's select it 
So the node count, I would uh, make it to two, uh, and then um, and then I'll go to the scale. Uh, yes, if I if the virtual nodes are disabled right now for the region which I've selected, like South India, Southern India, but the virtual uh, the virtual nodes uh, like sort of burst VMs which would come up uh, whenever uh, the traffic increases, whenever it's it's needed, or you can lease it or reserve it. So the VM scale sets you can enable. So when you enable VM scale sets, so the auto scaling and the multiple node pools you can create. Okay, so you can have multiple node pools for you know uh, running out different services with different sort of category of workloads, and. Uh, and we'll go to the next authentication since we are not going to enable RBAC, we will will not go with RBAC. And uh, it says about configure service principle. And uh, I will create a default service principle. I won't be using a pre-existed one because I'm not enabling any RBAC as of now. I'll just go with it. And then I'll. Uh, it's not a private cluster. If it is, then you know, like it would provision. Uh, you will have mapping for like you can go and map for your uh, <clears throat> so basically if you want to you know uh, have your own on-premise subnet or the vnet if you want to use or basically you know if you want to use a specific vnet which is tagged to your on-premise you can use it but yes we will go with the standard uh, the basic one uh, the load balances uh, go with the standard because it has it gives a lot of features which you will come to know which you will be coming to know in the future and then I will set up the log analytics workspace because you know the clusters are run, the cl when the cluster runs it has nodes, pods, and the containers and the applications. So there are a lot of logs which would be flushing uh, you know out of it. So I won't go with the default names, default workspace, but I would create rather which uh, good name and I'll create in southern part of India. Uh, let's go with South India. Do not support um, okay we'll go with the central part of India and I'll name the my service as log analytic AK log analytics again you can follow the name standard name space standards analytics AKS okay log analytics workspace okay. workspace AKS okay so I just go create it and then I'll put up the tags if you have something called as if you're an enterprise customer then you would uh, you should tag with your billing or iteration IDs or the project billing plans ATC and the, for, for me what I do is like you know if I have a lot many users I uh, give the owner email so because you the person who will be you know uh, will be charged for use, utilizing this particular service Okay, so you can, uh, you know, use Azure governance and policies to make it a compulsion as well, tagging compulsion. So I'll go ahead and uh, uh, I'll just review it. So it would review whether it do not collapse or, you know, uh, uh, it do not uh, collapses or what you can see, you know, uh, uh, conflict with existing services. It would just uh, do a final validation. And if you want to automate this particular whatever steps we have chosen, uh, you are always you know welcome to download this particular ARM template. And uh, so ARM template is nothing but it's an infrastructure as a code. Uh, you can use the infrastructure as a code for uh, you know like make a, a automation solution for your particular any of your particular customers where you have all the parameters which we have chosen as a parameters which can be passed upon and then you can create multiple clusters uh, within a minute using a, a ARM template. Okay, So as of now, we'll not uh, concentrate on the ARM template. We'll just go ahead and create it. So I'll meet you on the next video uh, with, the, uh, uh, with the cluster created because the cluster takes, the cluster uh, rolling out of the cluster takes at least uh, uh, 10 to 15 minutes. Uh, it depends upon the nodes, how many nodes you are going to spin up. Uh, anyway, we are not talking about, we are just spinning up the infrastructure as of now. We are not spinning up any services, parts, anything else. So that